How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode. Today we're making crescione. I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation, but these are Italian flatbreads with a filling. I think the name stands for crescent, which is like crescent moon, and I guess the shape resembles that. But never mind the name, these are absolutely delicious, and you can make them with various fillings. Today I'm going to show you how to make them with ricotta, mozzarella and spinach. So let's get to it. So for the dough, I'll need some strong white bread flour, water, yeast, salt and olive oil. For the filling, I'll need some ricotta, some mozzarella, some blanched spinach, salt and pepper. Simply mix the ingredients for the filling together and leave it on the side for later. And I've seen recipes making these with tomato sauce and mozzarella. It would be like a little pizza pocket and some recipes actually use mashed potato and I've seen some with some ground sausage as well. So the possibilities are endless, just make sure that your filling is not too wet, that's the most important part. So that's why you should properly squeeze the water out of your spinach after blanching. And if you have never blanched spinach before, here's how you do it. Simply drop your spinach in a large pot of salted boiling water. And don't hold back on the salt, you want it to be really salty. Now give it a quick stir, let it wilt, this will literally take 10 seconds. Now dump the water out, strain your spinach and straightway pop it into a bowl with cold water. You want to cool it down instantly, otherwise it'll go brown. And once you've cooled it down, strain it off again. And now comes the elbow grease part. Really squeeze it. Press all the water out as much as you can. You know, if you don't squeeze the water properly, you end up with a wet soggy dough later on. But that's how you blanch spinach. I mean, it only takes the time that it takes the water to boil. Other than that, it's literally seconds. I would suggest running your knife through the spinach a couple of times. This will make it easier to mix it with the rest of the ingredients nice and evenly. But let's look at the equipment that we'll need for this recipe. We'll need a pan, ideally a large one. We need a bowl, scales, dough scraper and a temperature probe. We'll use a fork for crimping the dough shut and a rolling pin. I'm kneading this dough by hand so it's gonna warm up. And that's why I'm gonna use cold water. Around 5 degrees, 6 degrees, just about right for this recipe. Now grab your bowl, add the water, follow that with the yeast, salt and the olive oil. This is a very simple dough, we're mixing all the ingredients from the get-go. But do make sure to stir everything well before you add the flour. You want to hydrate the yeast and dissolve any large salt crystals. Now add the flour, grab your dough scraper and start turning this into a dough. You want to mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour to avoid making a mess on your table. And once it's nicely mixed, pop it out on the table and we can start kneading. This dough is not sticky at all, so I'm going to use my regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, then using the fingers of my left hand I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. Once you've done this a few times the motion will become fluent, it will be like second nature. You want to knead this dough for around 6 minutes in total. And once it's nice and smooth and stretchy, we're ready to ferment. Quickly clean down the mess, pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 25-26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. If your dough is cooler, it will take longer. If it's warmer, it will take less time. I'm going to leave it for around an hour and a half to two hours. You want it to double in size. Once it's nicely puffed up, we can divide it. Whenever you're dividing your dough into more than two pieces, I would strongly suggest using your scales. It's easy enough to eyeball it when you're making two, because you can just simply cut it in half. But any more than two pieces, if you don't use your scales, you might end up with wonky balls. You don't want that. And then your crescione, or whatever you're making, is going to end up being different sizes. Some of them may not fit in the pan. And of course the cooking times will be different, so just weigh your dough. So shape them into balls after dividing. Take a piece of dough, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle going around in a circle until you reach point where you start it. Then tighten it against the table, pinch the seam together at the bottom and you're done. Then we're going to put them on a tray or on a plate, cover them with cling film and leave them to ferment. The final proof will be around one hour. You want to see them clearly puffing up. And these look good to me. When I poke them with my finger it leaves a nice indentation. Now we can start final shaping. What I like to do is dust my table with flour, dust my hands and then first off start pressing it with my fingers just to get it into a general shape, only then continue on with a rolling pin. 
You know, I normally say don't use too much flour. It's easier to add a little bit than to take off. But I'm clearly using quite a bit of flour here. The difference in this case that we are going to roll the dough is you're going to absorb quite a lot of that flour. If you're simply shaping bread by hand, then this would be way too much. So roll it nice and thin. I basically rolled it to fit the diameter of my pan. It ended up being about 2 millimeters thick. You don't really want it to be any thicker than this. To finish it off, you can also stretch it out a little bit by hand. Because when you finish rolling with a rolling pin, the dough, it may still pull itself back together. Here we are, the next step, the filling. And I'm going to use a quarter of it because we're making four breads. Now spread it out nice and evenly on half of the dough, leaving an edge. Now fold the other half over so it's nice and even. Start sealing it up, but before that, press any air bubbles out. Try and get rid of as much air as possible. So far so good. Looks like a massive dumpling. Now it's time for the fork. I mean the edge would probably stick if you press it hard enough with your finger. But forking it just makes it look better. And it will really make sure that this doesn't open up as it's cooking. So just go all the way around the edge, make it look nice. And here's a little trick, which is not totally necessary. When I mean, you see the edge, it's a bit rough. So I'm going to grab my pizza wheel, just trim it off so it's nice and even. But you don't have to do this. It doesn't change the way it tastes, believe me. Okay, so here's how you shape a cushone. Pretty cool, right? And if you messed this one up, that's fine, you got three more to practice on, so just get on with it. The main thing is to take your time, don't rush it, easy does it. Make sure you are keeping your dough balls covered as you're working with this. You don't want them to dry out as they're waiting their turn. And also cover up your ready-made crochone. I put them on a chopping board and cover them with a tea towel so they don't dry out. It doesn't take a lot for a dough to go dry. And disappointment when baking bread is not something you want. Okay, so that was the last one, and by now, I already feel like a pro. Now we can get over to the pan and start cooking. Now you could do these in a dry pan, but I like it a bit oily, it gives them a nice crispy texture. You want to cook them on medium heat for around 6 minutes per side, but do flip them every couple of minutes or so. That will ensure that they're cooking nice and evenly, and when you flip them, flip them from the crimped side. The opposite side is quite delicate, and you don't want to tear a hole. And of course, medium heat may be different in your pan than it is in mine. So it may take you longer, it may take you less time. Just keep an eye on it, keep flipping it. But if it's beautifully golden brown all over, it's a pretty good indicator that it's done. And if your pan is big enough, you could do two at a time. And if you don't want to mess around with the pan, you can cook them in the oven, on a tray. But a pan with oil, that's the way to go really. Well here we are, that's how you make crescione. Enjoy them whilst they're hot. What do you reckon? Would you try making these? Or maybe you have tried these? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell if you haven't already. Because if you are into bread and baking, you've definitely come to the right place. You will learn everything you need to know if you're a complete beginner. And I'm sure I'll show you something you haven't seen before, even if you're an experienced baker. So stay tuned, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.